Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for Max Cookie. Uh, this time we, uh, we are trying to start another uh, new interesting uh, tutorial series and they're talking uh, about again uh, Sebas software and uh, this time we'll start to talk about to introduce PyroCluster. PyroCluster is a volumetric plugin uh, really useful to create uh, uh, effects as smoke, clouds, fog, uh, fire and a lot of other interesting things. Um, PyroCluster can be uh, bought and installed as a standalone plugin or it is part of uh, the final render 3.5 version for 3ds Max. So uh, it is uh, a really amazing plugin because it is really complete and has a lot of features really useful and added. It is also uh, compatible with Final Render, the Scanline rendering engine, and uh, it has a complete support of Mentor Ray. Obviously, it works perfectly with all the standard plugin uh, uh, about particles in 3ds Max, and I'm talking about the standard uh, particle system, uh, the particle flow, and also the uh, thinking particles from Sebas. So uh, let's start to uh, check how it, it works. We'll introduce how to play with it, and we'll start to talk about every single feature step by step. So uh, first of all, uh, you can find the plugin there inside the environment as the other atmosphere plugin. And you have it there, so you have to click on Add. And you see that you have there PyroCluster 3 and PyroCluster 3 Mixer, so we'll see how we have to use these two stuffs. If we select PyroCluster 3 and we set to OK, let's close this one. Uh, you see that there we have the entire interface for PyroCluster and it's really complete and we have a lot of interesting features we can use. So obviously we can render it using a, a the rendering engine we like, but there are some things that can be used using final render and I mean for example the global illumination for the uh, volumetric particles. Uh, the first thing we need to work with PyroCluster is uh, a particle system. So let's go there and let's start playing with a really simple things. So I go there, I select a particle flow source, we can rotate this particle flow source to have the uh, outer, the direction there up. And uh, uh, if we see the particles, you see that it, uh, it's really, really fast. And we'll try to do a simple particle system to do something with PyroCluster. So, uh, first thing. I like to emit the particles from the pivot. Then we need to have less speed, a little bit of variation there, and we have a little bit of divergence. So you see that's our smoke. And uh, let's go with dots. We have no rotation actually. And then I like to have a drag force there and we go also for a wind maybe something going in this direction so back there and the particle system and we need the first of all a force we can cover the rotation and the first one by least will be the drag. So you have to change the particles there. We have the mission until uh, 100. You see that the the speed is still really high. So we go for something less, something like 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 for the variation. And you see that now it is slower. Maybe we can have a little bit less force. Let's try with six, uh, 700. OK. 
okay and after a while I'd, li I'd like to delete the particles let's say maybe uh, 50 and 15 so you see after a while we have the particles going away uh, obviously I'm not working on a, a really uh, a realistic simulation there it's just to have something to work on and then I like to have also uh, the wind add by list and we select the wind so that's the wind obviously it's really high let's go for 100 it is still too high let's try in this way you see now it is a little bit slower we can delete the particles later let's go for 75 so we'll have particles for more time okay uh, I'd like to have a little bit of turbulence inside the wind so let's add you see a little bit of turbulence and a little bit of a little scale and we need also a little bit of frequency so you see that it is uh, using uh, let's go for the local okay something like that and we can have maybe a little bit more damping let's go for seven and seven and seven so you see the particles slowing down uh, after a while okay uh, so now we have the particles but we need the volume and uh, talking about the earth particle system I like to select the PF source properties and you can remove from visible to camera or you can do another things and is to set to zero the scale of the particles so you will have no particles inside the rendering then let's go to set a light and we can go with a target direct and let's say something like that and I can move it okay and we can have also a plane under the particle system just to have the possibility to project the shadows then we need to change a little bit the hotspot parameters and we have also the other sheet so we have the complete illumination there and we have uh, now the uh, the basic steps we need so let's go there and let's save the scene in the right folder uh, let's go in Dropbox, Dropbox okay and we'll have 3ds max particles and we call it pyro cluster introduction let's copy the name in there we save the scene okay so now the first thing we have to do is to go uh, inside the environment and the first thing you see is the particle and the lights so in this area we have the possibility to select the particle system we have to use for uh, pyro cluster and the lights will use for illumination let's start with the first thing the particles you see that we have nothing inside the selection actually and then we have three buttons the first one is the peak particle system so that's the way to select the particle system then we have the remove particle system so if we have let's create another particle system 2 
uh, let's go for a, a sprite okay uh, let's imagine sorry let's imagine that we are selecting the particles let's start I pick the PF source and then you see I can select also this one so inside the list we have uh, the PF source and the spray if we like to remove the spray we can select spray and press the X button and you see that now we have just the PF source um, let's select the spray and cancel uh, let's make uh, another another thing. Uh, we have the selection over the plane, so another object inside the scene. Uh, let's go back in the environment, and you see that we have another uh, button, really useful, simple but really really useful. And I mean, we are talking about the edit particle system. So you have an automatic selection, you see, of the particle system you are selecting inside the list, and you see that the selection was changed from the plane to the particle flow source. So you see it's really useful to use this particle. Now let's see what happens if we uh, try to render with a scan line. Let's go with our final resolution 900 and 400 and let's lock the image aspect. Let's render. And you see that we have the plane and we have a black stuff there and we have the, the, the smoke but we have no illumination so you see that we have something but no illumination and no shadows there so let's see what we have to do to have something more uh, interesting let's go there and the first thing we need lighting obviously if you have final render and you are using the global illumination there is a way to say uh, to pario cluster to use the part the uh, the global illumination so you can use the skylight and the sun directly to illuminate the smoke uh, let's go there but we'll start with, with a really simple setup so let's pick a light and you see that now we have lighting obviously you have all uh, the remove lights if you are selecting more lighting uh, source and you have the edit light to select the light from there inside the scene let's render again you see that actually we are still no illumination uh, the first thing you have to do is to go there and you see that inside illumination you have no illumination enabled let's set to enable the illumination and let's see what happened and you see that we have now a white smoke so you have to remember that to illuminate the uh, pyro cluster you need to set to on the illumination uh, because that's the only way to shade the volumes so, uh, for the moment we don't need to understand how to use the staffs, we need just to start working with the, uh, with the various tools there. So, um, what do we have there? Uh, another interesting uh, uh, thing is the shadows. You see that actually we have no shadows inside the scene. You see that inside the illumination we have a shadows panel there, and we have the cast shadows, receive shadows, and self shadows. The first one is the cast shadows and that means that you have the possibility to cast the shadows over the ground. So let's set to on the cast shadows, let's render and you see that actually we have no shadows, still no shadows inside the scene. So the first thing we have to check is the light. Let's select the light and you see that we have no shadows. So first thing we have to set to on the shadows let's try to render but you see that we have still no shadows inside the scene uh, that's really simple because we have no objects inside the scene and we can check the shadows if we put for example there a teapot you see that the shadows are set to on actually so what do we need? we need to uh, say to the light source that we like to uh, create shadows from the atmospheric effects and you see that there in the shadows parameters we have the atmosphere shadows you can set to on and then if you render you see that we have the shadows there so that's really simple so actually we have the shadows for let's remove this teapot and let's save the scene uh, you see that we have the shadows on the ground but we have no shadows on the smoke so 
you see that there we have the receive shadows and that's useful when you have uh, some objects inside the scene and you like that uh, the shadows coming from this mesh will be applied to the to the volumetric effects but actually we have no steps inside the scene so what we need is the stealth shadows so that means that we like to have the shadows from the smoke over the smoke so let's set to on the self shadows and you see that we have an illumination there now it's not important the quality actually but it's just to see how to play with the stuffs uh, to have a better visibility let's introduce another light just to fill the illumination there we can remove we can say that this light will simulate in any way the uh, sky color and there in the advanced effects we have no specularity for this light and actually if we render you see that we are illuminating there but we need to say to use this light also for the volumetric effects so we have to go back there and pick the slide so let's render oh, sorry I have to check we have to try again to pick the light okay now we have it let's render and you see that we have the illumination obviously it's really really high so we have to go there and say for example 0 0.4 and you see that it is less uh, we have less power and we can have uh, a lower value you see just a little bit of lighting and we can change also the color so going to the blue something really dark and let's see you see it's really really useful uh, visible we can remove and go there to have a darker color just to give a little bit of lighting okay so you see that it's uh, also really really fast to be calculated so go back there and uh, uh, we uh, check the first panel and you see we have the particle and the light then we have some information about the uh, the quality there you see about the properties for the volumetric and the rendering with uh, some information about the quality but uh, we are talking about a more complex series of parameters and we'll talk about it in a coming tutorial uh, let's go to see some uh, simple things as for example the color you see that um, we have there some colors and a lot of tool and the color one obviously gives the color to the smoke so if we set for example that to the gray you see that the smoke start to be gray and we have also the possibility to set some variation and the coloring so uh, let's say uh, maybe uh, just not so much 0 05 and we we are introducing some variation of coloring so you see that we have some colors coming out we can also say to have more variation so you see that we see more color variation inside the smoke and that's interesting because it gives us the possibility to have a color but also some variation inside the volumes and inside the color to give a more realistic result so uh, other things you see there we have the luminance so we are setting how much lighting we have inside the color obviously if we have a luminance set to 100 you see that the shadows are not so really use, uh, visible but it's really useful to um, to have uh, some kind of special uh, effects and uh, let's see what I mean for example let's set there another color so we have two colors and the second color will be for example a red let's render and you see that we have this color there and uh, let's say we have also this color so uh, let's say that this one is yellow 
So you see that we have three colors, we have the red there, we have the yellow, and we have also some point of gray there. We can go for a, a more strange color using, for example, the green, and render again. And you see that we have there some point of color. So you see we can mix three colors, but we can also decide, for example, uh, that this one, the yellow, has a complete self-illumination. So you see, it's really useful to simulate, for example, a burning stuff as the fire. Uh, let's set back to zero. And you see that we have a color mixer to mix this three color, and we have the distance and the density. If we set the density, obviously you see that the mixing of the color is different. And we'll see in a future tutorial how to use this mixing and how to introduce uh, the position, you see that we have the position there and we have the variation for every single and we have also the possibility to use a material there. So uh, you see that we have a lot of possibility there inside the colors but obviously we'll see more in depth how to use it uh, to create more complex stuff. Uh, uh, now I'd like just to introduce you to the usage of uh, that stuff. Um, other things uh, we can see there for the moment, uh, uh, you know, it's just to see that if I press over a circle there, you see that we have an effect uh, uh, editor that gives us the possibility to control all the parameters and all the characteristics of the smoke and creating uh, some interesting things and we'll see how to use it in a, a more advanced tutorial. Okay, let's go back to uh, some um, something like, let's say, maybe a white color, uh, maybe we have a gray color as this one, and then we have also a really dark color as this one. Let's see what we have in this way. You see that we have some colors inside um, the, uh, the, the smoke. And we can use, for example, the density just to have a better representation of our smoke there. So other interesting things just to use the uh, the, um, the plugin is that, for example, there you see that we have the possibility to load settings and save settings. You see that I can press there. And we can say the preset in a Pario cluster for format, so you can save this preset and, re and reload on another scene using the load settings, and that's really useful because you can have a database of uh, preset to create smoke, fire, clouds, and all the other things you can do with Pyro cluster. Another interesting thing is the preview. So you see there we have the Zygon, the open preview, and we can have inside uh, a little viewport, the preview of just one particle volume. You see that we have there the possibility to see how uh, the effects change at the birth of the particle and at the death of the particle. So we have the entire life to see how it will evolve. Obviously, actually, we have no animation, no changes during the particle life, so we see nothing. Other things we can do is to have a background there to see the transparency over the colors or to choose a background color as this one for example we are selecting uh, uh, let's wait it is doing something and uh, then you see that we have uh, the possibility to uh, to control the preview as we done before, but I had a crash, so I restarted the scene. So um, other things uh, uh, useful for the moment, uh, you see that we have a lot of control there about the illumination and the secondary illumination, and uh, I'd like to see something you can use, and that's the uh, possibility to have a preview in viewport and to control the shape. You see that there we have the shape. The shape about every single particle there. So how the volume around the particle will be shaped. Uh, 
An important thing is that we have the possibility to preview something inside the viewport. The first preview is just the particle, so you see show particle only, and we see just the particles. The second one is show shapes as wireframe, and you see that we have a preview of the volume just to understand the, uh, the scale of the volume around the particles. The third one is uh, show shapes shaded. So you see, we see the particle volume as a, a, a sphere, uh, a shadow sphere inside the viewport. And the last one is the show shapes with noise. So we see uh, a real preview with the noise we have inside the plugin. So we have uh, an interesting preview about what we'll see inside the rendering there in viewport, and that's really useful. Uh, other interesting things is the uh, visible. You see that we have uh, this parameter set to uh, 1000. And this one will control the amount of particles, volume particles that will be visible. You see that now we have a low number, but if we have a lot of particles, we can decide how many will be displayed. Obviously, that's just for the display and not for the rendering. Let's set it back to 1000. Uh, then you see that there, uh, let's go for the preview, uh, you see that there we have the possibility to choose the shape. We have a box, for example. So you see we are using boxed uh, volume around the particle. Or we have a cylinder. So we are using cylinder uh, shapes to control the particles. Let's go back to sphere. That's the best thing. You see that there we have the scale, we can control it, and obviously we have also the possibility to control the scaling at the beginning and at the end. So you see that there, for example, we have the possibility to control there the um, uh, the, the scaling with some effects. So, for example, I can control there the graph and check how the distance uh, will control the scaling and if you see now we have a different scaling let's try to have uh, a really uh, low value so let's zoom there and we set this one really low let's say one and this one at the end we say that the scaling is uh, 15 let's set to visible and you see that now we have a really low scaling at the beginning and a really huge scaling at the end. Uh, let's go back inside the FX editor. Obviously this one is too low, let's say for example 3. And you see that now it is better, so we have smoke visibility there and a really big smoke later. Obviously we have other uh, tools there, but we'll see it uh, in a future tutorial. So let's close, and now if we render, obviously uh, it's used, the new scaling we have. So you see that we have bigger stuffs there and little uh, volumes there. Let's see for example what happens if we render uh, this frame. And you see that we have huge particles, volume particles there, and really uh, tiny particles there. So uh, we just see uh, some stuff about the shape and you see that we have also the possibility to control the squash of the particles and you see that we have also um, other control over the, uh, the particles there. Some stuff is uh, usable uh, all the time, for example the MLN uh, percentage is just when you use the uh, hemisphere as particle shape and we'll see how to use it. You see that there we have also the regularity. The regularity is visible there because you see that we are using a, a, a really precise shape of the volume if we have the regu regularity set to 100 and if it's set to zero, you see that we are using a really uh, not regular shape. Let's go, for example, to 75, and let's see 
is too much. Let's go to 50. Now you see that it is not bad. Maybe we can go for 40. Okay. Then you see that we have the squash as we saw before, and we can also see with the squashing set to there that we have also the possibility to rotate the particles and we'll see how to use the rotation and how to use also the particle rotation inside the uh, the particle system then you see that we have also the possibility to use the particle scale the particle orientation and the scratching done by the speed so if the speed is higher the particle will be more stretched and this will be uh, a really interesting effect we can have. So you see it is using the speed. Let's remove this one. Let's remove this question. And we saw how to control the scaling of the particles, how to control um, also the, uh, the, the quality there. And uh, another thing I like to introduce is the possibility, you see, to control the turbulence that is creating the noise inside the volume. Uh, let's go at full screen. Um, you see that we have there the possibility to choose between a lot of things. We have the possibility to control the noise uh, in a special way. We have, for example, the fireball and the tendril and we have the type you see that this one the regular is the basic um, noise and uh, it works in the same way it works for the the shaders and the material with a, a noise texture and uh, we have also the sides and the density and the tail so the size is interesting because you see we see uh, the noise scale we are using inside uh, the rendering and for example you see that now it is really really little let's go for example at 5 let's see what happened and you see that the scaling is not bad let's go to see what happened with the turbulence as we are using before you see that we have more detail than before and we have also for example the fractal 1 so you see it's a different way to uh, to render and we can go back there and we can have less regularity for example so you see we have more complex detail there we can go back there and we can scale more the noise and you see that we have more detail over the smoke and obviously also the the, the for example the scale can be adjusted with the distance so we can set again as an effect the emitter distance and we can say that at the beginning we have for example a scaling of 1 and at the end we have a scaling of 8 so the effects will be scaled depending uh, on the distance so you see that there we have more detail and there we have less detail because the smoke is uh, coming to be real big and we have the density and you see that the density is the density of the effects and it continues to be really fast and that means that we can have a really high density so we can create really pyroclastic effects obviously there it seems foam because we are not working in the right way with the uh, smoke detail and all the other parameters but also this parameter can be uh, animated and we can use again the same effects I mean the meter distance and we can say that at the beginning we have a huge amount of density let's say maybe 60 and at the end we have zero so we we'll have no, dist uh, no, uh, no density so you see that there is really dense and then it is a low density let's see what happened and you see that there is more dense and there it is coming to be less dense we can control the scaling and I like to have a bigger scaling at the end so you see it's bigger there so you see that the smoke 
it became to be really really big okay uh, you see that we have also the fall off uh, the fall off is uh, the fall off on the edge of uh, the single volume uh, you see that there we have no uh, fall off then we have the possibility to have a linear fall off and a cubic fall off so you see that the fall off on the edges of the volume will be more visible or less visible let's see with none we have this rendering let's make a copy and with linear obviously the fall off will be linear over the distance uh, from the center of the volume to the edge the outer edge of the volume and you see that some differences sorry are visible you see for example there let's see with cubic the fall off is higher so you see that there uh, the smoke is really as a single volume it seems and there we see more density around the uh, the single volume so we have a control also on the fall off and we have there for example the detail so we can control the detail on the smoke let's see with a really low obviously detail we have no detail inside the noise so you see uh, uh, we have a really really low amount of detail so we'll have a unique uh, smoke if we have a lot of detail obviously we'll have more details over the smoke surface and that's really useful to have uh, more interesting things there obviously this one too can be animated and this parameter is uh, used also on the other uh, kind of um, sorry of noise type so you see it's applied to all the other things let's say for the moment so uh, we have obviously there a lot of control and uh, it can be controlled you see in animation it can be controlled depending on the on the shape uh, of the particles the speed of the particles and all the other parameters of the particles we have obviously other uh, possibility there you see we have for example the advanced fractal that is a, a different way to use the fractal you see that we have more detail actually and it is different from the standard fractal we were using we have also other things like for example the smoke and you see that every single uh, noise type can give us the possibility to simulate the different effects we have also for example the cellular one and the 3D texture where we can use a texture map to control the smoke so we have a lot of parameters that can be used so uh, we done a really brief introduction to see how we can work with Pyro Cluster. Obviously, this effect is not so good because we are not going uh, uh, in the right way the simulation, but it's uh, useful to start checking how Pyro Cluster works. And you see that uh, without uh, any kind of works, we are. Uh, doing uh, a really simple rendering but it's not bad we can change for example the background color to something more similar to a sky so we can see the smoke over a sky color and we can have for example more light power on the direct trying to simulate the sun let's try it with 1.5 so you see we have more light in there and less light in there and we can see also what happened from other point of view we can see for example from there just to see how it is illuminated and you see that obviously uh, the quality actor is strange because we are not working uh, in the best way to control the the smoke and to control every single parameters but we have a lot of possibility to control how it looks 
you see that the shadows there are really really uh, visible because we are using a, uh, just one light from this part from this point of view to control it but you see that it is really fast in any condition so it's really interesting to see how to play with this particle and with a pyro cluster so uh, I saved the scene so you can just play with the basic feature we we checked obviously we continue to talk about pyro cluster and we'll start to use it to create really complex stuff as uh, clouds uh, for example rockets and meteors uh, uh, a lot of things so we'll do are really interesting things with it and we'll uh, we'll try to use it in the best way and we'll see also how to use it with mentor ray and the final render so uh, for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on so Max Cookie to check for more tutorial coming from cgcookie.com bye